of <coughs> great, great cash. Hallelujah. 2022 20, is our year of great cash. But even as we, we anticipate to harvest, even as, to, as we anticipate to get this great cash, we have to align ourselves with the word of God so that we are able to enjoy this great catch. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. The Bible says in First Chronicles 12, verse number 32, and of the children of Issachar, which were men, that had understanding of the times to know what Israel ought to do. The hands of them were 200 and all their blessed were at their commandment. Hallelujah. The sons of, of Issachar. The sons of Issachar. Mm -hmm. This actually happened, uh, this episode actually refers to the sons of Issachar during the time of David's struggle against Saul. So there was that kind of struggle, you know, against Saul. Because the way, ways of Saul were not pleasing to God. At that particular time, many gave themselves to David at that particular time. Many. But I want us to look at the sons of Issachar so that we are able to understand. The Bible says they understood the times. And not only that, and they knew what Israel should do at that particular time. Actually, some scholars, you know, say that this phrase, understanding the time, portrays that the men of Issachar were politically attitude. So they were politically, you know, uh, they had a political standing. And they actually, they, like they knew, it's like they knew the current events. They knew the current events, you know, to their own advantage. Others were saying or were interpreting this phrase as, you know, to be known as the understanding of astronomy or physical science. Others said that, uh, that uh, the men of Issachar were prudent and were wise. Uh -huh. Uh, you know, because of their religious scholarship, because they actually had, you know, had, you know, had done some kind of uh, religion. And they knew the proper time for David to become king. And I will take the latter. Because the truth is, really, many people don't know, but let's pick the latter, the last one. The last one, sorry. That they knew the proper time for David to become king. Because they understood the times. Hallelujah. And it is so important to understand the times that we are living in. As you will see as we continue. So at that particular time, there was a kind of civil war. Because there are some people who were for Saul... Others were for David. It is not as easy as we see it at times in the Bible. That takeover was not that easy. There was a kind of rebellion, rebellion you know, uh, in the land. The men of Judah actually anointed David as king. You know, and the Bible says in 2 Samuel 3 and verse number 1, there was a long war between the house of Saul and the house of David. Many people don't know that there was civil strife. 
They think the takeover was just, you know, just, you know, you know is as easy as we may think, but there was strife. Hallelujah. So it was actually a critical time in the history of Judah and Israel. It was a critical time. But in that critical time, I want you to understand that the sons of Issachar understood the times and they knew what to do or what Israel ought to do. Important. Hallelujah. And it is so then important for you and me to understand, to understand the times that we are living in. Even as we enter into a season of great cash, even a season of great harvest, we need to understand the times that we are living in. And it is my prayer that God makes us understand the times that we are living in so that we may understand what to do in this season of great cash. Hallelujah. We need to know that. So the sons of Issachar had actually analyzed the times and have, had perceived collectively what the times were all about. Hmm? They knew what to do because they understood what is happening. If you don't understand what is happening, then you will not know what to do at this particular season that God has given to us. Because it is God yeah, that orders six times and seasons. They don't belong to you. They belong to God. And it's God who ushers people into a new season. And God has ushered us into this new season for a purpose. So we need to understand the times and analyze the times that we are living in so that we may be able to take a step even to the great cash. Say amen. You will realize that the sons of Issachar, or the men of Issachar, were listed at, as only 200. They were only 200 in number. But the Bible said they were in one command, meaning they were united as one, so they were a great army, though they were minority. Hallelujah. They were few in number. They were actually minority. But God anyway uses, uses the minority <laughs> or uses, you know, the, the small things or the weak things to, to do exploit. That's what the Bible says in 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians 1 and verse number 25. The Bible says, For the Lord, for the foolishness of God is wiser than the wisdom and the weakness of man is stronger, of God is stronger than human being. I'll read again. Because the foolishness of God is wiser than man and the weakness of God is stronger than a man. So, may God use, use you, even though you are a minority, even though you are weak, even though you are a small or inexperienced, because God uses that kind, that, those kind of people. He uses the minority. He uses the weak. He uses the small. He uses the inexperienced and not qualified people. He does not use qualified people, but he qualifies those that he has called. So God used the sons of Issachar to understand the times that they were living in so that they will bring forth 
the reforms that God expected at that particular season. So the sons of Issachar actually in them were laborers, people who could work. Hallelujah. And they also supplied top theologians to other tribes. Though there were 200, they meant a lot. Hallelujah. They had very important or very great law in the confederation of Israel at that particular time. Hallelujah. They were few in number, but the Bible says that they were in one command. I pray that as a church, as a family, we be in one command. We be united to be one. Because that is one of the secrets of the sons of Issachar. They were one. And, there's, and, and, and unity is so important if we have to capture, you know, the blessings of God in this season. Because there's, this is a season that God is going to release hmm? a lot of blessings. It's a, it's a season of great catch. So there will be a lot of harvest. There will be breakthrough. There will be success. Hallelujah. But we need to understand the times. So the sons of Issachar understood the times. And they knew what Israel ought to do. And Jesus also, also said, actually, actually rebuked, rebuked his generation at that particular time because of not discerning the times. The Bible says in Luke 12 and first number 56. Hallelujah. It says, you hypocrites. He, he can discern the face of the sky and of the earth, but how is it that you do not discern this time? And that is the time of the visitation of the Lord. Jesus rebuked them for being astrologers. He, they were astrologers. They knew how to study the earth, the sky, but they could not discern the times that they were living in. So Jesus rebuked them. So it is important for you to know that Jesus wants you and me to discern the times that we are living in so that we may know the steps to take, so that we may know the actions to take. It is important. Praise the name of the Lord. And even Loma, even, even, even Paul, talking to the church in Loma, in Loma 13, verse number 11 to 14, he also talked about discerning of the times. And the Bible says in Loma 13, Verse number 11 to 14. And that knowing the time, now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation is nearer than we first believed. Hallelujah. And he said, the night is fast spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not rioting and drunkenness, not in cumbering and wantonness, but in strife and not in strife and envy. What number 14? Eh? The Bible says, but ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the fresh to fulfill the last day of the law. He was also warning, warning the church in law not to walk without, not walk without discerning of the time. It is so important to understand the times that we are living in. And, and as I have 
continually told you is that it's not going to be better than it is. It's not going to be better. Things will continue. Mm -hmm. Things will not continue being better. There will be a lot of strife. There will be a lot of new things to encounter. We are at war. Even at this particular time, when the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ draws nigher every day, things will not be the same again. We need to discern the time so that we may stand upright to receive the blessings of God or to receive whatever God wants us to receive at that particular time. Hallelujah. I hope you got that. It's very important for us to know that the times we are living in are not easy times. They are perilous times that are coming. However, the Lord is continually will continue to be together with us. For he says, I will never leave you, nor will I forsake you. Say amen. So the sons of Issachar had an anoint, a unique anointing that enabled them to understand the times and seasons to influence the leadership of Israel and also to establish a great dynasty that particular time when now David comes in. They help a lot as you will see to ensure that David's lane becomes comfortable. Hallelujah. So, I want, the sons of Isaac, actually they brought a few reforms. I, I, I want to put down the, the few reforms and I can preach. Hallelujah. Amen. So, the one, number one, they brought worship. Actually, the worship of Jehovah was restored in the land. Because, because what had happened is that because of the rule of Saul, the worship of Jehovah was not experienced in Israel. And that is one of the reasons that God rejected Saul. Saul was a poor king. He had all the physical characteristics that was needed to become a king. But he did not, he was not very observant. He did things against the will of God. If you read in 1 Chronicles 13 and first number 3, hallelujah, you will see one of the things that the sons of Issachar, you know, did. The Bible says, let us bring again the ark of our God to us. For we inquired not at it in the days of Saul. Just look at this. Let us bring again the ark of our God to us. For we inquired not at it in the days of Saul. In the days of Saul, the ark of the covenant was not in the temple. Hallelujah. And that, and the ark, you know, connotated. <laughs> connotated. Amen. The presence of God. So there was no worship during the time of Saul. Because the ark of the covenant had been taken away. <laughs> Amen. So the sons of Issachar, the sons of Issachar, they worked it out to bring back the ark of the covenant back to Israel. Amen. And you know, let's read, let's read them. I put your scripture here so that we understand. You know, 
uh, about, uh, about the Ark of the Covenant. Exodus 25, verse number 22. Hallelujah. Exodus 25, verse number 22. Okay. The Bible says, yeah. and I will meet with thee, and I will commune with thee from the above masses seed, from between the shallow beans, which are upon the ark of the testimony of all things which I will give thee in commandment unto the children of Israel. So here, it actually tells you that when the ark of the covenant is in, the, in place, it means the presence of God was in place. And therefore, worship was, was, was important at that particular time. But you find Israel had cried out for a king. And one of the reasons they, they cried out for a king before Saul is so that they may be like other nations. Hallelujah. Because the other nations had kings who instituted law upon them. God gave them a king and led the nation down because they asked for a king and they were given so. They lioted against God through prophet Samuel. Are we together, church? Are you lost? I'm hoping you're not lost. This is very important. So, the Philistines had captured the ark of the covenant and had taken it to their temple of Dagon that particular time. And this happened during the reign of King Saul. Can I repeat that? During the reign of King Saul, the Philistines had captured the Ark of the Covenant and put the Ark of the Covenant into, into their temple, which was known as Dagon. Dagon. There's a person in, who sings so much about Dagon. Hallelujah. That, and that, uh, and that Dagon meant their fish god. Eh? Alikuwa ni miungu, ulikuwa, Dagon alikuwa ni, ni miungu wa samaki. Hallelujah. Now you can read that one in 1 Samuel 5. 1 Samuel 5, 1 to, 1, 1 to 5. Hallelujah. So, one of the things that the sons of Isaac did was to work out such that the ark of the covenant that had been eh, that had been uh, uh, taken, you know, forcefully by Philistines will be returned back. Hallelujah. And they did that. And in essence, they returned the worship of God back in its place. That's one of the things that the sons of Isaac did. Hallelujah. Number two, the sons of Isaac uh, paid a lot of attention because of the sin of immorality. So they helped to wipe out the sin of immorality. Because where the presence of God was not, then any kind of sin will come in. So you can read that one in, you know, I mean, 1 Samuel 7, you know, as so you continue. So they worked hand. The sons of Issachar were few, but they were in one command. They had wisdom and understanding of the times. And that's why they helped a lot. Number three, they, are, they paid also attention to the music. 
there was that kind of music, music of Baal that was sung during Saul's time. <laughs> Amen. So they brought back good music, worship music back into place. And that will remind us uh, the, the, the songs that we sing. And that's why we actually need to worship God. We need to know the type of songs that we sing in church every time. And the songs should really be songs to worship God. Hallelujah. So if you lead First Chronicles 6 and that one to that, but you don't have to. You don't have to. Hallelujah. But you need to know the three things that the sons of Issachar did. Amen? Which is important. But I want to tell you, eh, it is so important to discern the times that we are living in. You see, if you know the times that you are living in, then you will not continue doing things the way you are continuing. The way you are doing them. Ukijua nyakati gani tunaishi. Hautaendelea kutenda mambo vile ulikuwaka natenda. Hautaendelea kufanya mambo vile wewe mwenyewe ulikuwa unatenda. Siku hizi unakuta watu hawajali ni nyakati gani tunaichi. Tuna you don't care which time. Many people, they don't care which time that we are living in. And our actions should go hand in hand with the season that we are living in. So it is important for you to know the times that we are living in. For instance, if you are a young, there is a way that you need to, to behave knowing that age is cutting up with you. So you come to Nailewana. Amen. So may God help us to be worshippers of the spirit and truth. Because that is so important. So we need to understand the times that we are living in. There is a season and a time for every purpose under the sun. Ecclesiastes 3, verse number 1. Hallelujah. There is a time and a season for every activity under the sun. Nani anakubaliana na mimi hiyo? So you cannot continue doing things the way you are doing them yesterday. You can't. You have to discern the time. You have to know which time we are living in. And after knowing and understanding which time we are living in, then you can act upon that. What do you mean by a season? We, 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 we will go slowly today. What do you mean by a season? Season is one of the four divisions of the year. Summer, winter, autumn, and spring. Sometimes you would tell me they are not in Africa. Amen? They are there. But they are not very pronounced here. Because we live in the tropics. So, but, this, but the world is divided like that. Yeah? The year is divided like that. So what is a season? The season is a time of period like Easter, Easter season, rainy season, dry season, planting season, harvest season. What is the, where are we now? Which season are we in? We are in the season of Great cash. Amen. We are in that season of great cash. So you cannot then continue behaving, you know, like you are in another season. You have to, you have to understand what, it in, what you need to do in that kind of a season. Praise the name of the Lord. And what is time? Time is, is the minutes, the day, you know, the months the year, the present, and the future. Hmm? Amen? Actually, it is a period which an action is completed. What is time? 
time is a period in which an action is completed. In the Greek, time is known as chronos. Chronos. That is where the word chronological comes from. Amen. It refers to general time frame of the events actually in God's plan. Chronological. Amen. And in Greek, the time, the word given is kairos. Kairos it actually means a fixed, a fixed or a special occasion. Kairos. Hmm? That is, it, it means a time, it means times, it means, that's why you talk about time, you talk about half time, you know, you talk about all those things. And you find that one in Revelation, Revelation 12 and verse number 14. So, the season and time are interrelated in that there is no season without time. Neither is there time without season. So God's season don't necessarily follow the geographical pattern. That's why now, according to the word of the prophet, we are living in the time of great cash. Don't look at the geographical pattern, but hear what the Lord is saying and act upon that time and season. But before you act, you have to know and to understand which time we are living and what you are supposed to do in any given season. I don't know whether you're getting this, which is important. Amen. So therefore, we need to remove our minds from the pattern from, or from the mindset of yesterday. Hmm? And focus into this mindset. Lazima to badilishe. Huwezi kaa vile ulikuwaka na kaa. Mwaka uo mungine. Ama siso niyo ingine. Then it means you will not. You will not. Get that which God wants you to get. Amen. So. Lack of awareness of the siso. Will cause you to fail. Or will cause us to fail. If we are not aware which season we are in and what we are supposed to do, we will fail in that kind of a season. For instance, eh, God is releasing blessings. He is releasing blessings. Say amen. And you are not ready to receive because you are you have not designed, designed the time. You don't know. You don't know the time. You think it's weeping time. Or you think it's, you know. So you are busy doing other things. And people who understand the times will be busy reaping the blessings because they understand the times that they are living in. And that is so important. Say amen. Hmm? So we need to understand that this season is a season not to toil but to receive from the Lord. If you look at a person like at a person like Peter or Simon for that matter, he discerned the times and seasons. He toiled the whole night. But Jesus comes in. He could have refused. But he discerned that when you see this man come, it is a time for a great catch. He didn't, he didn't start looking at Jesus and how Jesus was born and how he was, he, he was not a carpenter and how he was, you know, he, he was not a fisherman. He could rather be a carpenter. He didn't look at those things. But he said, as you say, 
Hallelujah. As you say, because he discerned at that time, he understood that when Jesus comes, he comes with a greater season. He comes hmm, with a great catch. When Jesus comes, he comes with the blessings. So we need to understand that. So as we move to this season, there are priorities. There are priorities that we need to make as you move into a new season. I see, I see in America when they know that winter is coming, the business people remove the old stock of clothes and then they start bringing in the clothes that appertains to winter season. You cannot, <laughs> hallelujah, you cannot continue trying to sell the clothes of autumn or spring when it is winter. It means you will fail amicably. Why? People are coming to shop for winter clothing and you are keeping those things there. You will fail. So it is, there are priorities that you and me now need to do. There is a way for us to, we are supposed, there is a way we are supposed to stay so that we may receive whatever God has, has for this kind of season. For you to understand, for you and me to understand the season, we need to discern. We need to be wise. Like the sons of Issachar. They understood the times. Do you know what they did then? They ruled together with David. Hallelujah. <laughs> In war, they were number one. In labor, they were number one. In theology, they were number one. Why? Because they discerned the times. They understood the times and seasons. And it is, that is what will help you and me at this particular time. Thank you for that faint amen. So we need to understand the season and the time. Amen. So the sons of Issachar, the sons of Issachar, actually, like I said, they joined David in laning. <laughs> they joined David in laning. And their lives were never the same again. Only the sons of Issachar. You see, let me... Let me, let me tell you. So, uh, there were 6,800 people from the tribe of Judah who, who came and gave in, to, gave in to David. Hallelujah. There were 7,000 mighty men from Simeon, that tribe of Simeon. Hallelujah. And the tribe of Sebrum is recorded to have 50,000 warriors. But the sons of Issachar were only 200. They leaned. Why? Because they understood the times and seasons. You will lean eh, in this season after understanding the times and season that we are living in. And then he stay, you know, align, stay aligning yourself with what the season carries. I don't know whether you understand, but you'll understand as you continue. And that's what I said, and I gave you a good example. If you want to catch the blessings of God this year, you cannot stay like you used to stay last year. You cannot sell in your, in your shop eh, the things 
that are for, are for different seasons. Are you together? And that's why we are, we are here. The sons of Issachar is a very good example. Amen? The, the word understanding in Hebrew is bina. B-I-N-A-H. Bina. Bina it actually means to have insight or act with prudence. So we're talking about wisdom. Understanding. Tell your neighbor, understand the times we are living in. Actually, in the dictionary, the word understanding, it means to separate something mentally and distinguish its parts. So, <laughs> in this season, you have to distinguish every part and every portion of this season. You have to distinguish what God is about to do in this season. And when you do that, you will receive a great cash. Bwana Yesu was the son. Where's the car today? Zeme mungu alisema, ah, oh, mungu alisema, lakini lazima ukae, eh, align yourself with the word of God so that you will receive that which God is giving at this particular season. You have to be in the spirit. You have to move with the spirit of God so that you will eat that which God releases at that particular time. Otherwise, season it a Peter, now tabaki ukiba nyimbo. Oh, great cash. Oh, great cash. You have to discern. You have to receive this word. Believe in it. Do what this word wants you to do so that you may receive the blessings of God. You have to be as wise. You have to be wise. You have to, to use prudence. You have to be to stay with that kind of prudence. You have to be skillful. Siku kande na kugojia zikuje. Hasita kuja. Dipasa unakuta. Ile boti ingine hawakupata lakini kwa hii boti ya Simeoni ndio walipata kwa sababu Simon had an understanding of the times and seasons so we need to understand and do that which has to be done for you and me to enjoy what God is giving to each one of us. We have to be skillful. We have to take an analysis of something of this season. We have to look at the truth. Ah, we have to do look at the do's and don'ts. There are things that you, you continue doing in a season and don't receive what that season has for you. Priority. We have to have priority. Bwana Yesu son. Amen. Yeah? We have to know which season we are in and what we are supposed to do in that particular season. Amen. So today, actually, you know seasons? Season is an accumulation of time and has to begin somewhere. Today, is day number 16 of the new season. And I tell you those people who had the understanding, who discerned the understanding of those times, they have already starting, uh, started enjoying the season. So that's why I'm bringing this teaching, so that you don't stay like you are staying before and expect to receive this, whatever God is releasing to us. You will not this. You will not. Amen? Like I've said, prayer is, prayer is bringing forth the intimacy to the one who is releasing the blessings. You cannot just stay and say, Kulisemekana, ni season here. You have to go and cash. You have to go and create intimacy. 
with the breather, with the author of the great cash. Si kukaa nyumbani unakaa hivi walisamaka namna hiyo. Because prayer is creating intimacy with the God who blesses with the God of the season. Jesus is the God of this season. But you can't just stay at home and expect that you are aligning with him. You are too busy doing useless things that you used to do and you never got any cash. You are too busy toiling day and night. Leave that and come and align. Hallelujah. Align. Create intimacy with the blesser. Create intimacy with the one who is the author of the season. Jesus is the author of the season. You cannot be far from him and expect to receive. There was one lady in the Bible. Her name is Mother. There was a mother and Mary, isn't it? Yeah. A mother continued the mother. A mother continued to do useless things. But our Mary never left the feet of Jesus. She knew the time. <laughs> this is not a time of eating, but this is a time of staying in the feet of Jesus. That's what she knew. A coquition and a subuka na masufuria na majiko na meri ako kwa migu ya Yesu. Yesu alisema huyu dia anajua huyu dia anajua the times Mary you keep doing useless things ambia mwezako forget about doing those useless things this is the time this is the time of being blessed but you cannot be blessed if you continue doing the things you are doing leave them and come at the feet of Jesus and receive a great cash Hallelujah. Bwana Yesu asifiwe sana. Things don't go that way. Their priorities. Their priorities for every season. I don't want you to be left toiling day and night without catching even a frog. Move with the times. This is the time of staying in the feet of Jesus. And when you sit in the feet of Jesus, you will create intimacy, friendliness. Your relationship will change. <laughs> relationship with God matters. So that when he releases blessing, he releases to you a son who stays close to the Father, receives the reward, as opposed to a son that is far. Be nigh. The son that times come to the feet of Jesus and talk to him unless you don't want the great cash. Peter was in need of that great cash. He knew I will do what Jesus says I do. You cannot know what Jesus is saying unless you are with him. Yeah. Hallelujah. So may God help us. Mungu atusaidie. Today is a very important day for this season because season is an accumulation of time. What you do, what your future in this season will depend 
on what you do today. What you do today dictates the amount of cash that you will receive from God. My God, are you getting this? Yeah. Season is an accumulation of time. What you do in this hour will dictate how the season will be for you and your family. I don't know why I'm taking care of this so much. Hallelujah. What you do today, men and women of God, will dictate how you will be tomorrow. Don't look at tomorrow. Tomorrow is future. For this season to work for you, or for God to work for you, be careful what you do today. Kama unakaa huko kisegenyana, kijiga huko, unakaa ukisegenyana, usiku na mchana, ni siku gani utakuwa pamoja na Mungu? Ni siku gani? Uweze endelea hiyo hiyo vituko? Uweze endelea kufanya vituko aina hiyo na unasema Mungu atanibariki, utabarikiwa namna gani? Na wewe unakaa ukisegenyana, unakaa ukibaki bai. Shindwa Tunatakana tuwe katika miguu ya Yesu. Biblia inasema ya kwamba tuombe tusiingie kwa majaribu. Na wewe you are not in the camp. People should be in the camp. Come to the camp. The camp of the Lord Jesus Christ. There is peace, there is love, there is joy, there is everything. Ah. Tumepita hapo. Hmm? Bwana Yesu asifiwe sana. Mimi nakwambia umepita hapo. Mungu atusaidie. Hmm? Eh? Yesterday was the school that prepared you to live today. Yesterday was a school that prepared you to live today. And today is a time to take action on what you will be tomorrow you can take control of you cannot take control of yesterday but you can take control of today and when you take control of today your future is bright Hallelujah. Ambia mwenza kubadilika. This is a new season. And you have to align yourself with the blessings of today. Yesterday is dead. Forget about yesterday. Look at today. This is the day the Lord has made. For us to rejoice and to be glad in it. It's not yesterday. Yesterday is dead. Hallelujah. It has passed away. Leave it. Leave it. Watch a jana. Ilare salama. Ambia mweza kwa watch a jana. Ilare salama. If you continue looking at yesterday, then the spirit of defeat or the spirit of yesterday will haunt you. It has to be kukupiga. Doto zile zinawaga ni zile doto kulikuwaga. Uchuhuda wakweda jahanamu ni uchuhuda wajana. Oh, tulikuwa tunafanya. Oh, tulikuwa tunafanya. Naravu. If you continue with the spirit of yesterday, you will not catch up with the spirit of God today and you'll be left out 
you will not even know the visitation of the Lord Jesus Christ. Bwana Yesu asifiwe sana. Utajuaje Bwana amekuja? Kama wewe unaendelea kufanya vituko vya jana. Badilisha kuwa kama meli. Meli alienda kwa miguu ya Yesu. Hakujali juu ya chakula. Chakula tuko nazo. Na mambo hayo tuko nayo. Amen. Lakini season hatuko nayo. Hii season ikipita hautaipata. Utaanza kukimbizana na season ambayo ilienda. Kanyanga hii season tusonge na hii season na jia ya kwanza ya kuenenda na season hii ni kuwa katika miguu ya Yesu ndio Yesu akiondoka mnaondoka naye akibariki uko pale piga Yesu makofi that is the difference between the sons of Isaac and the sons of Sebrum all the sons of Simeon for that matter they discerned the time <laughs> walijua kweli Mungu hataki Sauli hawakusumbuka na matezo ya Sauli na mambo ya Sauli katika hiyo vita waliingia kwa nani kwa David na Biblia inasema wao walikuwa only 200 lakini ndio walitawala pamoja na Daudi. It is not about the numbers. It is not about what you have. Hallelujah. But it's about the discernment you take. It depends on the steps that you take after understanding the season and times. Tell your neighbor understand the season. Wacha kufanya vituko vya jana. Hafita saidia we. Mbwana hezo wa sifuwe sana. Ni nani wanataka kubarikiwa? Kama unataka kubarikiwa, wachana na hizo vitu. Wachana na vituko vya jana. Let me need that. Hallelujah. Hello, thank you. Amen. Watu wa mungu. He. Wewe wachana na kukibizana na vitu. Saa hii kibizana na Yesu. Kana Yesu hapo miguuni akikuambia launch in the deep, wewe una launch in the deep. Acha kuanza kuogea mambo mimi. Launch. Jamaa moja amekuwa miaka 38. Eh? Alianza kuogea maneno ya jana. Yesu ameingia pale yeye yeah, anaanza kuogea vituko vya jana nimekaa hapa miaka 38 na minane na sijapataka mtu this guy should have the sun the time ni nani huyu ameingia hey aje kumpea story Yesu akuangalia story alimwambia na sasa wewe unataka nini <laughs> haleluya Yesu si wa mastori Yesu anakuuliza unataka nini na wanaanza kumwambia mimi ni sali yangu hivi eh, mimi nikatupwa oh hiyo isasa idea Yesu anakuuliza na lakini atakuuliza ukiwa wapi yeye yeah, anasema kama Tommy or you who remember and I have a rain and I will give you rest haleluya sasa usiende huko joko kwa Yesu ambia mwenzako joko kwa Yesu ame twitter tumekuwa na appointment na yeye kutoka tarehe mbili kutoka tarehe mbili tumekuwa na appointment na Yesu na Yesu ndiye ndiye captain ya season hii Yesu ndiye captain ya baraka Yesu ndiye captain ya great catch Yesu ndiye captain wa breakthrough Yesu ndiye captain wa success Yesu ndiye Haleluya Wacha kumwacha nyumbani Eh Haleluya alitupea appointment 
Angalia saa. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm tempted to look at time. Hallelujah. Eh. Wachana na hizo vitu za jana. Kana Yesu. Joe kwa Yesu. Eh. Hey. Tengeneza uhusiano wako na Yesu kupitia maombi. Second service tutaangalia ni zile vitu zingine gani ambazo tutafanya tutafanya ndio tuingie katika season ya kubarikiwa mimi ninaomba maombi yangu ni ya kwamba me and the children that the lord has given unto me to continue being in signs and wonders Isaiah 8 and verse number 18 That is my prayer for us all that me the bible says see I and the children that the Lord has given to me are for signs and wonders may you be for signs and wonders in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ may you enjoy when the bible says signs and wonders it means that you shall walk in supernatural supernatural activity all your life it is our prayer it is your prayer that in this season of great crash that you and the children that god has given unto you be for signs and wonders There is no way you could be for signs and wonders if you do not follow the word who releases miracles. Even the disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ they ceased fishing and they followed one who is a master for signs and wonders may you follow Jesus who is the master for signs and wonders pigia yesu makovi but it depends do you know him you need to follow that one that you know that one that you know You need to know the visitation of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the season of the visitation. This is the season that the Lord is coming forth with the blessings, the blessings that will take care of your debts, the blessings that will take care of your setbacks. Hallelujah. Hey. Pia Yesu makov. Fuatana na huyo Yesu. Uni wakati wa kufuata huyo Yesu, ukifuata huyo Yesu, madeni yako yataribika. Ukifuata huyo Yesu, wale wako na pesa zako watalipa. Eh? Huu si wakati wa kujiulizia kwa nini aliongea juu yangu. Huu si wakati wa kujiulizia. Ni wakati wa kuashiria Bwana atende mfuate. Ambia mweza kufuata eh. Hey. Ukimfuata magonjwa na maradhi hayawezi kukufuata. Hayawezi. Ni lazima tujue hii ni season gani. Hii ni season ya kufuata huyo Yesu. Uy. May God help us. Pigia Yesu makofi. Hallelujah. Mm. Bwana Yesu asifiwe sana. Haleluya. Huu ni wakati wa worship. Tunamwabudu Mungu. Eh? Haleluya. Huu ni wakati wa kumwabudu huyu Yesu. Huu ni wakati wa kumumwagia manuketo kwa miguu. Huu ni wakati wa worship. Una worship huyo Mungu na ukimworship ishara na miujiza sitaenda kukufuata hey ile fasi ilikuwa ilikuwa gani 
eh, ati uki ukimwabudu hmm? nazo eh, then your roots will go downwards and, and your fruits will go upwards eh hey, nilikutumia leo haya Isaiah 37 pas number that one tunamaliza na hiyo ni wakati wa kumwabudu Mungu na kuambia Si wakati wa kuombeleza, si wakati wa kulia, ni wakati wa kusema inabe is enough, waja nifuate huyu Yesu, nione ni nini yako naye. Ni wakati wa kurudisha worship, worship kwa ota yako ya nyumbani. Huu ni wakati wa kurudisha worship kwa ota ya nyumbani. Biblia inasema and the lemnas. Everybody say and the lemnas that is escaped of the house of Judah shall again everybody say again shall again take root downwards eh, and bear fruit upwards amen yes hey uni wakati wa kumwabudu bwana it is a time to praise him and as you praise him hallelujah you will take root downward and you will receive the fruits upward ni wakati wa kubarikiwa ambie mwenzako mimi nataka baraka hizo mimi nataka hizo baraka hallelujah bwana yesu asifiwe sana eh you need to learn the urgency of this season there is an urgency of today eh kuna dharura ya leo tuingie kwa maombi kwa dharura to worship kwa dharura there is an urgency god is looking for one to worship him in truth and in spirit and this is the time so that you can catch up with the visitation of the lord guy i don't know whether you seeing what i'm seeing this is warfare kata 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 hizo vitu fuatana na huyu Yesu mimi nakwambia eh uwezi umia kifuatana na Yesu eh you will gain roots downwards you will gain roots downward he is the lock the lock that is higher than i hallelujah we need to be there and as we are there god will continue blessing us there is a way that seems light but it's not always right come unto jesus who is the author of this season he is the author of this season my friend follow him to the letter and the blessings of god that had no sorrow shall be your portion when you follow jesus the curses that be that have been following you will cease to follow you because immediately you will enter into a season of miracles the bible says that there are them that believed him were followed by miracles and wonders of course focusing unto jesus who is the author and the finisher of our faith piga yesu makovu kama unanielewa Simama uite Yesu. Yes! Simama umuite. Ita huyu Yesu. Yes! Sitaki kuona watu wakitoka. Wale wanatoka ni wale wamekuja saa hii. Hawa nimekuwa nao kutoka fast service. Na hawatoki. Wale wako nyumba. Sema Yesu. Yes! Yes! Niko hapa. Yes! 